Hey guys, today we're going to be showing you how to do this Hello Kitty Pez animation thing from the second Ant-Man movie, and uh, this is what it looks like. Just shoot your footage however you like the thing to move. I, uh, I didn't film this at slow motion, as you can see there's a car moving in the background here, but that's not too big of a deal. The first thing what we're going to do is we're going to come over to tracker, track camera. I like to go to advanced and then detail analyst. Just makes the track a little bit better, but it takes a little bit longer. When the camera finishes its solve, you can see that there's a couple points on the ground here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create a null on the ground. So just select a few points that are on the ground. Create null on a camera. And we're going to rename this to floor null. And from there, we're going to click new, solid, element, test. Perfect. And in the description, you'll see that there's a thing to download and it'll show you all the 3D models I made for this. So if you go to element, Go to scene setup, go to import, models. There will be the Hello Kitty Element 3D model and then the Hello Kitty Pez OBJ. The OBJ does have textures, but the Element 3D textures are more Element 3D friendly. But if you want to change the textures, you can choose whichever one you like. All right, so there's the model I made. What we're going to do first is go to environment and change it from the studio one to the one we shot on the day. So if you do an HDR, and this is just an HDR image of what I shot when uh, I filmed this. So if you click OK, and uh, that's the model there. So we could create plane and drop the plane below it so it's in its own. It's not in the first group, and you can change that to group two. And this will be our floor plane, so I'm going to make it a little bit better. So 10 by 10. And, uh, click OK. So you can see that there's a thing there, and it should be just floating with a plane below it. So what I'm going to do first is if you go to group one, which is the PEZ model, you click Create. We're going to null, and this null I'm going to name Pez Animation Control. And I'm going to link that to the floor null while holding shift. So it's going to move the position of it to that. If we bring this up, the white one there, move it back a bit. Scale it to say 800. Click R. It's gonna rotate it so we can kind of see it a little bit better. And now it'll just be standing there, floating in 3D space. For the plane, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to the element, go to group two, create a group null, create another one. And this one I'm just gonna do ground null. Hold shift, get the pick, pick wick, and then go to the floor null. And as you can see, it's not there. But what you have to do is you gotta go to the ground null, click R, go to the first axis on the orientation, which is the X, and click 90, and it'll flip it. You can scale this up, rotate it a bit. That's a bit better spot kind of move it so it's can it actually be where we're filming and you can see that we created a ground null here all right so the floor is there you go back to the element layer the scene setup come over to preset physical and matte shadow and then drop that on the plane. The reason I didn't drop it before is because it disappears and it's hard to orientate a thing you can't really see. <laughs> so, 
from there, what we're going to do is we're going to close those quick. Is you're going to go over to the animation and we're going to go to the render settings and we're going to add shadows. So enable, change that to ray tracing. You won't see any because we haven't actually added any lights. And then we're also going to do ambient occlusion. Turn this on and change that to like 10 to start with. You can see what it does is it adds shadows in the little areas. So you can bump it up, bump it down. You can also increase uh, the samples, which makes it a little bit better quality. So it's not as grainy looking. All right. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the lights to match the scene. I'm gonna just move this down a bit. And add a light, so new light. I'm gonna add a parallel light first. This is gonna be like the sun almost. I'll change that to 100. And the light should be some. The way the, this light works is the it's almost like an affinity light. It doesn't matter where you move it. It just matters where the point of interest is. If you click A, you can change this. And this will change how your shadow acts. And what I'm trying to do is there's a shadow right here from myself is I'm going to try to match the shadow as best as I can. Let's just add the rotation. Really do take your time on this because this is the part that really sells the effect. Right, what I found you could do too is if you create, oops, create another light and just change it to ambient change it to like 5% and just adds a little bit more of a glow around it kind of just to fill out those little areas change that next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to get control of the shadows itself so if you duplicate the element Pez layer minimize that for now name this one element shadow and then turn off the second one. I guess we gotta open it back up. If you come back, you can turn off ambient occlusion. And then if you go to output, composite, change it to shadows, you'll just have a shadow layer. And that's what we want. And if you turn this one off, turn the second one on. You click on that. You can turn off the shadows. Keep the ambient occlusion on. And this one should be just that. So now we have an element layer of just the 3D model without shadows except the ambient occlusion. And then we just have the shadows. And to change this is if you go to shadows, change it from normal to multiply. And then there's your shadows. The reason we do this is so you have more control of the shadows. So what we can do is we can add curves, fast blur. Change the fast blur first here. Kind of match the softness. You can also click T on the shadows and drop this down so it matches the thing. And from there, you can see there's a little bit of blue in this. So I'm going to change it to blue. Just bump it up just a little bit. All right, this is kind of what we got so far. So it's tracked into the footage. Shadows are there. What uh, you can also do is, this is a very bright area, so the light's kind of, kind of bright. So you click AA, and you can just change this down. So let's try 80. Yeah, that's doing a little bit better. yeah looks a little bit better so it's not as the highlights aren't blown out as much minimize that all right next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually animate this so if we turn off if we go to the Pez animation 
First thing you want to do is come up to the pan behind or the anchor point tool and move this to the middle so that when we rotate this model it rotates from this point not down at the bottom. And then if we click V and then R and hold shift and press P you can keyframe this. So you can have it where you want it to start. Oh, I'm gonna have it start back here. All right, so keyframe the position and then just kind of randomize the orientation a bit. So it doesn't look too organic when it comes in. And uh, I just realized I'm at the end of the timeline, so I'm just going to click the keyframe, bring that to the beginning, and then also move the timeline to the beginning here. <laughs> All right. After you find a little spot you like, you can click orientation and keyframe it as well. And then move to the end of the timeline, and then just move it forward here. If you hold shift, you can move it a little bit quicker. I'm moving in the wrong axis here. Bring it down. This is quite big, so I'm going to go back to that. Press S and change this to say 700. Oops. Change it to 700. Maybe a little bit lower. 600. And then go back to rotation position. Then after you find a little spot you want, I'm just going to change the rotation a bit. As you can see, there's a quick little animation of what it looks like. You can play around with the keyframes however you like. It's just try to make it as less as possible so it's not as jag like your animation isn't moving up and down. It's just kind of moving consistently over time. Another thing too is you can come and click on the actual mat or the path and animate it so it's going up and then comes down. Just add in a little bit more variation to it. There. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually come down to the Pez layer, minimize that, and we're gonna color correct it. So the first thing I dropped is the hue and saturation and drop the saturation a little bit. It's, you look, this red is probably the brightest thing on the scene. Gonna add a tint, Let's say 15. This just adds like an overall darkness. And then if you drop levels, the way we're doing it here is these blacks are a lot blacker than every other part in the scene. So if we're fortunate enough to have an actual black thing in the scene, what we can do is if you go to the exposure and you crank this up, you can see that these blocks are still very dark compared to this black. So if you come over to the black side here and increase it so it kind of fades it away. Then if you click this wheel beside it, it goes back and you can see what it's done. It's just lighten up the blocks a little bit. And you can do the same for the whites or the highlights if you bring it down. This scene is not as bad, but uh, these whites sometimes can be overexposed. And if you look at the whites here, you got to check the brightness. So I'm just going to bring it down just a little bit. But this, this scene isn't too bad. All right, and that just adds an overall exposure to it and makes it look a little bit more realistic and I'm going to drop down a fast blur let's change that to like two 
so it's not as sharp. All right, as you can see, the colors look a little bit better and match the scene, but this all depends on your shot. Like I shot this on a very flat profile, so I'm matching it to the flat profile. But if you're shooting on a contrast, you might have to change it differently and change the saturation, the tint, the levels, and all that stuff to match your footage. The next thing we want to do here is animate the little part where it supersizes or gets bigger. So what we're going to do is if we go to the Pez animation, click U on it so you can see where the keyframes are. And we're just going to scale it. So if you click S, click S, you can add a keyframe, and then go four frames or whatever back and click zero. So this will animate it getting bigger over time. And to make it look a little bit better is if you go to toggle switches, enable motion blur, and then on your comp, this will that's the wrong comp. It's not the control you want to add it to, it's the element Pez layer. And this will add motion blur to it when it scales up. But I'm going to turn that off just for right now so you can see the next part. And if we go to the Pez and type in CC wide time, drop that. Now I'm going to change this to five and that's one so then when it scales up I have those keyframes on the beginning of the scale move to the where the scale is at its final spot change that to zero and that's zero so you can see that over time it will scale up you gotta play around with these keyframes a bit like change the scale to zoom in quicker you can also make this end a lot quicker so it's not as fake looking it's a little bit too quick and then you can turn back on the motion blur and it'll all right that pretty much wraps up this tutorial on how to do this effect it's uh, not too hard of an effect to be completely honest but what really sells it is the compositing and the direction of the shadows and the actual compositing of the shadows and if the animation just kinda is smooth and not janky going up and down so I would spend a lot of time a little bit more time than I did for this tutorial but just fooling around with the settings and make it look as realistic as possible and match the lighting but anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please subscribe if you want to see some uh, more videos every week on some superhero effects. And yeah, have a good one.